right, we're here today with Black Five TV and author David Weber. David, welcome to Black Five TV. Mm, thank you for inviting me. If you would, please tell our audience a little bit about yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I write science fiction. Um, probably the uh, series that I'm best known for is the Honor Harrington series. Um, I really don't know how many other open-ended series I technically have floating around out there now. I, I know that it's probably more than I really need to have because I can't seem to stay up to, up to date on any of them despite a fairly uh, largish output. Um, I tend to write uh, military science fiction. Uh, I tend to have strong female protagonists and the differentiation between the good guys and the bad guys and most of what I write focuses on the acceptance of responsibility. The good guys take responsibility and the bad guys don't, uh, which probably reflects my own value structure. Okay. How much, growing up, how much Science fiction, military science fiction. Oh my read? goodness, growing up. Well, the very first science fiction novel that I ever read was uh, Jack Williamson's Legion of Space. Uh, I had broken an arm or a leg or something when I was about 10, and I'd sort of finished all of the Walter Farley books, and I'd finished the, uh, we were there at the Battle of Lexington and Concord books, and. I was looking for something else to read, and I came across this hardcover uh, of um, Legion of Space and read it, and it was great. Wow, you know. And after that, I went and read um, Sprague de Camp and uh, P. Schuler Mitchell's um, uh, Genus Homo, uh, which were the first two science fiction novels I ever read, and both of them actually wear pretty well. I think Genus Homo actually wears better than uh, Legion of Space. Uh, but when I went back to read them in college, I started noticing things I hadn't noticed as a 10-year-old, like the fact that in Legion of Space, uh, the heroine is named Al Dori, and the men all have names like Hank, Hal, Jack, you know, which was just a little peculiar. Uh, but they still had that... Um, sort of uh, magic edge of going beyond the world as we know it uh, that attracted me to science fiction in the first place. Um, I suppose you could argue that Legion of Space is military science fiction, although I tend to think of it more as adventure science fiction. The military organization, such as there is and what there is of it, is almost as rudimentary as in Star Trek. Um, which is to say very rudimentary. Um, but uh, the first real series science fiction that I remember reading, um, and this would probably, people would say, left its mark upon me, uh, was Doc Smith. Uh, my dad had uh, the uh, entire original hardcover Smith uh, from, um, what was it? Fantasy Press? I can't remember, but um, the, uh, the Lensman books were all signed numbered editions, um, and the, the autograph in Children of the Lens went forever because he'd been there at the same bookstore every single time one of these books came out. Um, so I developed a, uh, a taste and a feel for what you might call science fiction on the grand scale uh, early. Um, I've read... Uh, everything I think Piper ever wrote. Um, I think he may have been the best military, he certainly was the best military science fiction writer of the 60s. Um, and there is a difference between writing military science fiction and trying to incorporate a military element into science fiction. Um, in the one you are writing with an awareness of the military culture and how militaries are organized and what they exist to do. And the other, you really don't have a clue about the military. 
you just need them to fill a hole in your plot. And that is really, in many respects, how I think of the difference between Star Trek and Babylon 5 or the remake of uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um, in Babylon 5 and Battlestar Galactica, there was an actual military organization that existed as such and that had a military psychology and organizational framework. And in Star Trek, even in Star Trek The Next Generation at one point, you have the, the Enterprise in battle and you have Picard and Riker simultaneously giving orders on the bridge, which would never ever, ever happen in a real military organization, and any writer who had any clue about how the military works would never have included that, um, which is probably wandering afield from your original question. I do that. That's fine, and that's what we're hoping for, actually. Ah. So. You mentioned H.B. Uh, Piper. Yes. Uh, any other favorite authors you care Oh. Mention? Lots. My biggest problem right now, my biggest, the biggest shortcoming of being a writer, and particularly a production writer, is that you run out of time to read. And so I am nowhere near as current with the field as I once was when I wasn't writing in it myself. Uh, but my favorite writers, the ones that were formative for me, would include, obviously, Heinlein, Less Asimov than Heinlein, although I know some people are arguing that I obviously read the entire Foundation series cover to cover two or three times, but no, not really. Uh, but um, Heinlein, uh, Keith Lommer, uh, Piper, Paul Anderson, Roger Zelazny. I don't write anything like Roger, I don't think, but I always loved his, his style. Um, Fred Saberhagen and the Berserkers. Um, Annie McCaffrey. Annie really gave me my taste for world building in fiction. Um, I read Pern, the, the, the first Pern novel, uh, Dragonflight, uh, when it was serialized, I think in analog. Uh, I was in high school at the time. And it came out as a serialized novel. And I remember reading it and thinking about, wow, she's got this whole planet, you know, that she's devised this whole society for and everything else. And so when I started writing, my idea about how you're supposed to structure the background for a book was really very strongly influenced by Annie. Um, and I realized when I went back and looked at, for example, Doc Smith, you really don't get that much about how the worlds and the societies are structured. You get more about um, some of the, the Adorian-dominated societies than you do about the ones that your heroes come from. Uh, and so it's always been important to me to sort of fill in that background, uh, to sketch it in. And Annie is the one who got me started really on that. Um, I read uh, Mac Reynolds. I read Murray Leinster. Um, I liked things about all of them. Um, I liked um, Cymac, uh, and oh, 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 loved Theodore Sturgeon. Man never wrote enough. Um, so they were all elements in there. I would say that probably the ones that most influenced me as a writer would be Heinlein, Lawmer, Piper, and Annie. But my evaluation of who had the most influence on me varies depending on the mood I'm in, too. Um, I really like and wish that there was more by uh, Patricia McKillop, uh, Emma Bull. Um, I like most of the Barbara Hambly that I've read. I love Catherine Kurtz's Drieni novels. Uh, which is one reason why I have asked her to collaborate in the next uh, Honor Harrington anthology. Um, and if Annie's health is up to it, I think we will have one from Annie as well, uh, which would be kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen, but I do know that Catherine's going to be there. Uh, 